Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go over basically just creating my 3D printed bezels and inserts for my taillights. Um, we're just continuing from the last video where I pulled the lenses off. There will probably be one more part after this, which will be for the wiring and setting up the actual LEDs and all, all that electrical side of things. But in this one, we'll just go through the design process and the 3D print process and the design tweaking process and just kind of how that comes full circle and how it ends up taking a lot of time to uh, potentially create something with scratch, especially without a 3D scanner. So let's get into it. All right, so first off, I picked up a new 3D printer, like I mentioned in the last video, and it's working awesome. Like, 3D printer technology has come such a long way, because I remember dealing with 3D printers, like, at work or whatever, and it's like, you'd always struggle to get your first layer down and whatever else, and it's just, like, a struggle. But this one has been really good so far. I pretty much plugged it in and away we went with no issues. So, um, been working through that. Doing a lot of testing there. Um, I started off with this whole process by getting into looking at like the light diffusion side of things. So I actually printed a little tester base, if we want to call it that, and uh, threw some LEDs in there and started 3D printing some overlays that can fit over the LEDs where I could test um, like material thicknesses and infills and things like that to see how well the light comes through and how well it diffuses the light and still doesn't take away from the actual light brightness itself. Um, so that was kind of, that's kind of a play around there. And uh, overall, through all that testing, um, I kind of came to, at least for the material I'm using, like probably it's different depending on the, what material you use, but at least for the white material that I found looked the best. I need to just 3d print like a 0.6 millimeter thickness and it and it works really well to diffuse the light but the other side of that which we'll get into later in this video was meshing that with my bezels or my inserts to actually go into the light so um yeah but we got to figure it figured out and we got a pretty good solution so the other thing i've been using which you'll see more of in the next video is uh this Corad power supply unit that I got just from Amazon. Um, I mean, it was pricey for what it is. Um, well, or maybe not is the other argument because it's actually a pretty cool unit. Um, so it's around $200. I think I paid like 240 or something like that. And basically you have four presets. You can adjust current and voltage output on the thing. And then uh, it's just got like banana plugs that you plug in you can get connectors with alligator clips or with uh, like little diode testers like what you have on a, on a multimeter or something like that um, and yeah you just set it up and away you go. That's what I've been using to uh, power up the LEDs for testing uh, the light diffusion and whatever else so you will see more of it in the next video when I will be testing the actual LEDs and uh, powering up a bunch of that stuff. Then the next thing I tested also for getting into these inserts um, was the diameter of the little round LEDs that I'm going to be using for the reverse and for the signals. Um, they're, they're five millimeter diodes, but the, the 3D print sometimes expands or contracts or whatever, and you don't know if exactly five millimeters is going to cut it. In the end, the best number was still five millimeters. So. Uh, we went with that and it's kind of like a nice push in, like press fit, very satisfying. And we'll stick with that. So for my particular taillights, there's obviously, I didn't want to cut them apart too much. Like I want to keep the factory, like whatever, as, as much as possible. I might still need to trim some of these just front lips, um, depending on where I'm going to run the wiring because I want it so that all three inserts can all go in together and be wired in together and be removed together in the end too and not be like permanently in place or you need to remove wiring in order to remove them or something like that. I'll probably never remove them, but 
just for design sake, like it's best practice. So um, yeah, so there's top section, which is gonna be my sequential signals. Uh, this kind of middle right half is gonna be my reverse lights. Um, I'm gonna add in some more brake lights here. There was no light there before at all on the factory OEM. And then the bottom will obviously be like my main brake light. So, so my design process is in kind of three inserts that can all go in here. And again, keep in mind, I'm just using caliper for the, this stuff. So I was just trying to measure, which mind you, I really didn't do the measure twice, cut once thing. I was kind of just excited to start seeing product coming out and seeing how it fit. So that's on me. I probably didn't streamline the design process as much as I could have, but um, yeah, so I started just measuring, taking measurements, kind of drawing something up in SolidWorks and printing it, test fitting it, and then seeing kind of where we sat from there. Uh, if I needed to adjust length or, or something else for insert design. And yeah, so we started with the signal bezel and micro, micro tweaks to the design and wasted material. So the pile begins. And then we moved on to the reverse and changed up designs with that and tweaks and measurement changes and whatever. So add to the pile. And then lastly with the brake bezel, same thing. More wasted 3D parts on the pile. So um, yeah, so I so I've got this big pile of, of 3D prints that are were good, but just weren't the right fit or helped me kind of get to the final design, which now I think we're mostly there. So let's put this thing together with what we got so far, make sure all the bezels are good and see what else it's gonna need. So these pieces, uh, as I was mentioning, I actually ended up printing the inner white piece, which is basically just like this thin, like a thin 0.6 millimeter um, piece of white material. That's nice. And uh, so I printed that first and then I actually designed it so that I could pause the 3D print uh, at the right layer and it'll move the extruder out of the way and then you put that white piece inside and then you tell it to continue the print so then it prints over top and you end up with um, two separate pieces but the one is inlaid inside the other. Um, for this one, just because of the way um, the design was and the fact that I couldn't really have an outer line here because otherwise it'll make it look like this will be too thin in comparison to this piece that'll be below it. Um, so I just did a center uh, cross brace thing, but I still, I inlaid, I inlaid this piece of white, but then I just changed the filament and printed the last few layers with that same white so that these edges, I could support them with a little bit of a rib there along the edge, but it wouldn't uh, show through as, as black and, uh, and turned out pretty good. So. I'm pretty stoked on how these came out. Um, and then obviously, yeah, I just can mold it to that, to the lens. And oh man, that is beautiful. Looks pretty dang good. So as you can see, it's obviously not taking much. I'm just hitting it with a bit of heat to kind of try and gradually heat up the, uh, heat up the material and then I have these lens inlays that were originally in the light um, that I can use to uh, 
to mold the new pieces. And the reason I did that is because honestly, the first layer finish coming off the 3D printer is so nice. Like it's giving it like this, uh, I don't even know what to call it, but it's giving it like this, uh, like this super cool, just like really nice finish that you wouldn't think is 3D printed. Um, so that's kind of the reason why I went with trying to print a fully flat piece and then molding it because I wanted to keep that finish all the way along. Whereas if I actually 3D printed something that's in that curve, um, to get a nice finish in the end, I'd have to like sand it down and you'd get rid of that like stair step effect of the print. So yeah, I really like the way this turned out. Um, hopefully I can keep it because obviously I'll still need to figure out how I'm gonna mount the LEDs behind this, um, but that's a problem for the next video. fairly hot to the touch so I'm like not really touching it a whole lot but and then it just takes a minute or two to cool down and kind of set up in the same place see so that's that looks pretty sick for this one to fit and then if we overlay the lens too, um, I think I'm also going to like, before I do the final assembly of everything, I'm going to paint everything black. Like I'll remove all this factory sealer and then I'll paint the whole inside black and then I'll lay these in and do everything else. Um, but to give an idea, That's gonna look pretty cool. Cause like once the lens is on, looks sick. For the upper section too, I'm still contemplating if I wanna use this lens or not, because this is from the OEM, like it, it goes in there. Only because if I don't use it, this side might look kind of goofy. Like, picture it painted black, but it's just kind of open there. The front looks good, but I'm still contemplating if I should use this also, because this kind of goes over those. And I mean, it's not really gonna affect anything, because this is still gonna be just the LEDs, and then reverse, and this will be red, because I'll have red lights behind there. Um, but then, with that in there, I don't know if it looks better. Because then it kind of covers up this side too, which don't mind the cracking and whatever there, but. Yeah, I think, I think it'll look better with that, with that uh, amber piece in there, with that amber and white cover in there. Because honestly, that looks pretty sick right now. And it kind of just gives it a little bit more depth. Yeah. I don't think I'll change anything with the actual like lens in terms of like it being red. Um, I don't think I'll worry about trying to make them clears or anything for now, but maybe down the road we'll look at that again. But I think for now, like this is gonna look sick as it is. So the next major step is just gonna be getting all the lighting. So I think that's it for this one. Um, let me know what you think about that amber and white insert, if I should leave that out or in. I think it looks better in because it kind of makes it a little, makes it look a little bit darker even too for where the signal is. So, uh, I think that's pretty cool. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. Going from gross, simple OEM to this, like those, those bezels and, or those inserts and everything in there 
make it look super sick. I can't wait to throw the lights on and actually see what the LEDs look like and get the and get the sequential all running and all that stuff. So we will do that in the next video. We'll cover all the soldering and light setup and whatever resistors I need to wire in and layout and the ghost LED sequential module that I'll be using to kind of control everything. So yeah, make sure you drop a like and comment down below and we'll catch you guys in the next video.